Look, up in the air, it's a bird, it's a plane. Nah, man, it's just a cloud. A podcast by Robert Patrick Waltz. The term cloud computing has made its way into the public consciousness increasingly over the past decade. But of all the marketing hype, many ask what exactly is cloud computing? Like many vaguely promulgated terms, cloud computing may have several different definitions. But succinctly stated, cloud computing is a way to distribute resources over a network such that they are scalable through virtual environments. Let me more fully elucidate some of those terms. Scalability is the ability to grow and to accommodate increased usage of a resource. A distributed resource is a resource that is not held solely on a local system, such as a personal PC or a laptop, but a resource that may be found in a remote location that is accessible through a local system in a transparent manner by the consumer of the resource. Virtual computing environments allow for the full separation of hardware resources from the software that runs within them. A virtualized platform will allow for multiple operating systems to run on a single hardware device or even separate hardware devices combined in such a way that they appear to be a single machine. The resources of cloud computing may be application software, such as word processing, email, or financial accounting, development environments, such as dedicated operating systems, database servers, or web servers, or virtualized hardware, such as disk space, memory, or CPUs. Cloud architecture revisions computing away from the monolithic machine and towards a shared service. In many ways, the shared service is similar to a utility available for public consumption, and oftentimes, cloud computing may be paid as public utilities are paid via a metered service. If pay-as-you-go service is not desirable due to cost, it is possible to create a cloud architecture out of existing infrastructure in order to take advantage of the scaling that the distributed computing affords. An organization can redeploy existing infrastructure as a service that more effectively utilizes resources already owned, and it can be done at a low cost if there is a willingness to take the plunge into open source. Linux is a free open source operating system that provides support for virtualization technologies that underlie cloud architecture. For Linux, there are two competing open source technologies that provide virtualization support Zen, spelled X E N, and KVM. Zen was the first largely adopted virtualization platform in Linux starting in 2002. KVM is a relatively new but has performance advantage due to its tighter integration with the Linux OS. KVM depends upon certain hardware virtualization extensions of newer Intel and AMD lines of CPUs and thus may not run on all hardware platforms, while Zen supports most of the CPUs produced in the past decade. Both Zen and KVM allow for multiple virtual operating systems or guest operating systems to be installed on top of a host system. To effectively manage virtual systems on a physical resource, a software controller must interact with them. A hypervisor is a management program that configures virtual machine instances for deployment. A hypervisor coordinates the installation and maintenance of guest machines on the host hardware. However, managing each virtual machine separately on each host resource would eventually become onerous. Therefore, cloud computing architectures interact with hypervisors to ease the maintenance of multiple virtual machines. Cloud computing, as stated before, may virtualize hardware components to implement the pattern of infrastructure as a service. Since the hardware systems may be heterogeneous, a resource is commonly referred to more abstractly as a node than to as a machine. A commonly used cloud software platform on Linux for both Zen and KVM is Eucalyptus, the classic utility computing architecture for linking your programs to useful systems. Eucalyptus segregates infrastructure into a series of nodes that perform processing and management functions in order to provide computational power and storage. The node controllers run the discrete virtual machines. Cluster controller nodes configure 
the virtual networks and manage node controllers. Storage controllers configure shared disk space while the cloud controller provides the interface for managing the resources of the entire implementation. Cloud controllers administer user access, monitors activities, and schedules interactions between clusters of virtual machines, uh, their hosts, and their clients. One vital concern of Eucalyptus is to create a system that interoperates with other systems. Eucalyptus provides standard interfaces for all of its software components. A standard and published interface allows other component makers to prepare different implementations of software that can replace the standard Eucalyptus software stack. The interface also allows for seamless integration with other cloud infrastructures such as the Amazon Elastic Computing Cloud or the EC2. With this overview of cloud computing and it, the promise it holds for extending existing resources into a scalable virtual architecture, the question is raised, how easy is it to set up a cloud? From a variety of aging hardware, a minimal cluster of servers may help determine the answer. The demonstration project that I have composed consists of two desktops running Ubuntu 8.04, long-term uh, service server edition on Pentium 3's 1 gigahertz processors with 512 megabytes of RAM and 120 gigabytes of disk space each to be used as host processing nodes. A laptop running Ubuntu 8.04 LTS server edition on an AMD Athlon XP 1.8 gigahertz processor with 1 gig of RAM and 60 gigabytes of disk space is used as a management node. The laptop ran as a cluster controller while the two desktops assisted as node controllers. KVM as a virtualization technology relies on CPU extensions that have become widely available since 2006. The computers of this project do not possess these extensions. Zen virtualization, therefore, was installed on the servers. Due to the hardware and operating system requirements of Eucalyptus, a separate cloud management tool needed to be explored. Ganetti open source clustering software served to provide the coordinating stack that would expose the servers as a cloud. All the software installed correctly, and to a point performed as expected. Unfortunately, a virtual machine instance could not be executed on any of the machines. Ganetti was able to establish communications from the node cluster to the node controllers, but it was unable to create an instance of the virtual machine. Zen was able to create a virtual machine instance, but it was unable to run the machine that it created. The failure of the project points to several weaknesses of the open source community. First, while documentation can be found, most support of software comes through community forums. But as a product ages, relevant information as well as the memory of users become stale, and the locations to find the information may either change or be deleted. Secondly, although Linux distributions attempt to maintain a stable release through the life cycle of a product, as a release ages, in a maintenance cycle, software components may be updated in a release that break a dependency on which another software package has. Also, at some point, bug fixes no longer receive the attention on older releases due to the resource constrictions that force developers to focus primarily on the most recent effort. Software that once was operational for a system may disappear altogether as it transforms into a new design or gains a new purpose. Lastly, technological developments spur software development to the point that backwards compatibility is not or cannot be maintained, and thus newer software is unable to reliably execute on older platforms. Yet, despite these weaknesses, there is nothing in this proof of concept that speaks against more recent hardware being used to effectively produce a cloud. But it seems once hardware has aged past five years, it is difficult to find a useful purpose for it that meets the newest concerns of technological development, at least from the experience of this project.